uncertainty is a reality in everyone's life and we can observe it at all levels because this is the very nature of the future that it is uncertain a project is not free of this uh, problem of the future because the unforeseen events can adversely affect the viability of a project for example if the NPV is actually greater than zero or if it is positive any unforeseen event might turn it negative might make it undesirable so this is a situation that we need to remember and we need to um, include in our analysis the adverse effect can be there but sometimes a desirable effect can also be there that unexpectedly a project might become even more desirable than before but the adverse effects is something that we are concerned about if the desirable changes occur unexpectedly we welcome them that is not a concern for us so we'll be focusing on the adverse effects of uh, the uncertain future on the viability of the project hence we call it sensitivity analysis because it is checking the sensitivity of the project with reference to the unforeseen events and the changes that are unexpected in the critical factors and what are these critical factors a few examples are mentioned here that it includes the unexpected changes in the benefits you can see that the green color arrow is upwards it means that the benefits are favorably changing whereas the red arrow is downwards and shows the unfavorable changes in benefits definitely if the benefits decline it is going to be an unfavorable change and if the benefits increase it is a favorable change and in the costs we can see that the unexpected increase with red color is an undesirable change and an unexpected decrease in the benefit costs is a favorable change and then again similarly cause uh, if the discount rate if it increases unexpectedly it is a desirable change and if it decreases it is an undesirable I, it if it decreases it's an it's a desirable change whereas the increase was a was an undesirable change changes in the location can also affect the outcome of the project because if we shift a project to an, some other place which uh, for which it was planned actually then the outcome can be different because uh, due to certain factors maybe change in the demand uh, in the other location that we have chosen can affect the outcome of the project and the climate or the other sort of environment it can also affect the outcome of the project and hence the NPV can change so changes uh, in the production technique can also happen if we um, come up with a more capital intensive technique it is going to be uh, a better uh, outcome as compared to the labor intensive technique so this is another option that we can analyze uh, for for the sensitivity analysis of a project then we have delay in benefits if the benefits they get delayed definitely the NP will decline uh, and that is also a kind of possibility that can affect the uh, estimated outcome of the project delay in the beginning of the project which is going to delay the cost as well as the benefits it can also affect the NPV of the project because if the project is not completed within time and started in time its demand and its usefulness might evaporate and in that case the benefits would not be required by the society for example in case of COVID-19 if the project is not completed within time or started within time the pandemic might disappear even before that and in that situation the uh, purpose of the project would not be served so the delay in the benefits uh, as well as the costs can, can uh, cause a trouble whereas in the last point only the benefits were delayed here both of them are starting at a later point in time so out of these we are going to consider the first three in this certain course we start with the benefits 
from the practical point of view it is very useful to conduct this sort of analysis because NPV um, if we can find out if it is actually positive and desirable if it becomes zero and then finally if it becomes negative then we can see that uh, it's it's a certain point that is the value of NPV zero beyond which the project would become undesirable for instance if this is the number line this is NPV it is zero it is positive here and it is negative here so in this case this uh, NPV zero value is that point beyond which we shouldn't go because uh, definitely a negative NPV project is not the most suitable project. So we choose the positive dimension and we want to know that what is that certain level of decline in the benefits which will lead to this uh, cut, so cut off sort of value because after this the project is not desirable anymore. So we as a project analyst would like to note this value of benefits and note this in our uh, office so that whenever the benefits decline unexpectedly, uh, we keep an eye on this decline and we avoid this decline to uh, reach this level where this NPV will become zero. So case one is with the benefits as we already listed the various possibilities of sensitivity analysis. So unexpected decline in the benefits is something we are going to do here as an experiment. So the decrease in benefits, we consider that they decrease by 5% and this is the maximum gap. We are going to use maximum gap as 5 because this is uh, an anticipation to the interpolation formula because in interpolation formula, we do not exceed the gap uh, from 5 the gap is at maximum 5. Check the value of NPV. The value of NPV is to be investigated if it is turned 0 or negative. Mathematically, if I want to define this, I can say that the NPV would turn 0 at such, uh, such an you know, unexpected change in the benefits, that is the decline. So this is the formula NPV would be equal to zero after the certain change in the benefits here and percentage change in B is the switching value of B at which the NPV is zero. So whenever the NPV turns zero, that percentage change in B is known as SVB. We will see what this SVB stands for as we go ahead. So exploiting the relationship between NPV and the change in benefits, that is the decline in benefits, we can come to the uh, value of NPV which is going to be close to zero or zero. So we decline the benefits and we decline them in such a way that the uh, NPV reduces to uh, zero or reaches close to it. And afterwards we can do the trial and error by doing uh, and that a couple of values will be used that is the lower change and the higher change. We will come to this lower and higher change uh, because uh, the interpolation formula will include these values. Primarily the difference is to be kept at 5. So let's start doing this analysis. For this we are taking the same example that we have been using before in which we take this uh, hypothetical data from Lahore Sialkot motorway and the data is in PKR billions and the discount rate is 12%. This is the column of years, this is the column of gross benefits, this is the column of benefits. Uh, this was gross cost and this is the uh, benefits column. We have kept it in red color because we are going to experiment with this. We are going to increase the benefits by a certain percentage. The net benefits are calculated with the same old uh, B's and C's and then the discounting factor is noted and then we find the NPV. This is something I expect that you can easily do. However, the, the main thing or the new thing starts from this column. These are the declined benefits and we have declined them by 5%. So you can see that there is a 5% decrease in the, in the value of 20 and in the same way, for example, 50 reduces to 47.5. 
So this is the column of the new benefits that we can use and in that the net benefits can be calculated that is B bar minus C. So the um, uh, new benefits minus the old costs is going to give us the net benefits after 5% change. There is uh, uh, one assumption in the sensitivity analysis and that is that we change only one factor at one time, not multiple factors. So you can see that only costs, uh, the only the benefits are changing while the costs they are the same, they are not changing anymore. So here after doing this uh, N NB, that is net benefits collection, uh, calculation, we will get the NPV which is now 35.91. And you can already see that there is a certain decline in the NPV. And now we have NPV that is 5% decline in benefits. Then we have the decline benefits 10%. Why? Because uh, this is still positive and we want the NPV to turn 0. So as to get that certain dead end beyond which we shouldn't go. Uh, because after that point the NPV will turn negative. So these are the decline benefits uh, by 10% and you can see that 20 becomes uh, 18 and 50 becomes 45. So in this way you can do this calculation that uh, there is a 10% decline in the yearly benefits and definitely using this new net benefits I and old costs I can calculate the new net benefits and this is the set of values and now the NPV is 30.59 so this NPV is now at 10% decline in benefits now after this uh, we are still not at that point where we want to be because this is 30.59 and we want it to be 0 so uh, we can already expect that the decline is quite small as compared to what we want um, after 5% decline in the benefits the net benefits we get the new NPV which is 35 so there is a decline of about 5 uh, uh, currency units and if I further decline the uh, benefits there is again approximately 5 uh, units of decline so for this value to come down to 0 we need to uh, decline the benefits by a greater margin and for that what we can do is we can uh, bring a bigger decline and for example if we experiment with 35 percent we will get the uh, new version of the benefits uh, and then we can calculate the net benefits at 35 percent decline in benefits which will be this that is the new benefit column and the old cost column and then the sum of it will give us the NPV which is 3.99 which is substantially declined as compared to 30.59. Uh, so we are expecting that at 40% decline in benefits, the column will be like this and the net benefits will be recalculated and finally we will get an NPV which is negative. So you can see the N NPV has now become negative and it is at 40% decline in benefits. However, the problem is that we do not need negative NPV, we need zero NPV. And it can invite the tool of interpolation because there is one positive NPV and there is one negative NPV. So now we apply the interpolation. But for that the formula will change a little bit as compared to IRR because that is the calculation of IRR. Whereas here we are calculating something else. So we are trying to get the NPV zero and it actually lies between these two values that is 3.99 and 1.33 with the negative sign and this is at 35 percent decline in benefits and the negative NPV is at 40 percent decline in benefits we need to interpolate between these two values and we call this 35 percent decline in benefits as the lower change in benefits and we call this higher change in benefits as the 40 percent decline in the benefits because definitely 35 is a lower value and 40 is a higher value so now we have proper symbols in interpolation we have the lower percentage decline in benefits 
and then the difference of the two that is the higher and the lower percentage decline in benefits and then the NPV at lower percentage decline in benefits and NPV at lower percentage decline in benefits and NPV at higher percentage decline in benefits with the negative sign which is now uh, trimmed off due to the absolute sign or the modulus sign. So this is the interpolation formula and we interpolate this value. This is SVB which is basically switching value of benefits. So this is the switching value of benefits that we are talking about and uh, it is called switching value benefits as we will see in the interpretation. But right now let's just substitute these values that is lower, higher value, lower value, NPV at lower change, NPV at lower change, NPV at higher change and after substituting these values we can simplify this and we will get 38.75 percent. So this value is actually the switching value benefits because at 38.75 percent unexpected in, in, in decrease in the benefits the NPV will become 0 and before it it will be positive and after it it will be negative. So it is that phenomenon that we can say is a switching phenomenon because the value switches from positive to negative from this point. So this is definitely a suitable term uh, for this value that is the switching value of benefits before and after which the value changes from one sign to another. So after this we can see the interpretation and it is very straightforward the interpretation that this is that value of the decline in the benefits that will make NPV 0. Accordingly it is termed as switching value of benefits. Now we can try to verify the result and for verification definitely we can put this percentage decline in the benefits and see if it actually turns the NPV 0. So we are taking the same example and for verification we are using this uh, value that we found that is the switching value of benefits and we are going to decline the benefits by using this percentage and this is that outcome. Here the decline in the benefits is 38.75 percent and then we have net benefits and these net benefits are calculated by using the new benefits and the old cost and the answer would be this because in the sensitivity analysis we only change one variable at a time and this is benefits. Then we have the discounted net benefits column definitely we are going to discount it at 12 percent and we have done it here the answer is this when we sum all these discounted net benefits we get uh, a zero NPV and it is at the switching value of benefits which satisfies what it says that it is that NPV which is coming at the switching value of benefits and definitely at that NPV at that uh, the switching value of benefits the NPV should be equal to 0. So now this switching value of benefits that we found is verified. So in this way we can start the sensitivity analysis of a certain project and here the first case was discussed in which we introduced unexpected decline in the benefits and we found its switching value. In the next video definitely we will analyze the uh, switching value of costs. Thank you.